Welcome to part two of the training videos on the QuizCom org chart app. In this second video, I will look at how to connect the org chart to different data sources. This will include an Excel file, a SharePoint list, and Active Directory information using the Graph API. I have already installed the org chart app into my tenant and site. So now I need to add the org chart web part to my SharePoint page. To connect to a data source, I first click on Edit Settings. There are three data source types I can connect to, an Excel file stored in SharePoint, a SharePoint list, data from across Microsoft 365 using the Graph API. I will start by looking at an Excel file. In a document library in my site, I have an Excel spreadsheet called Employees. In that spreadsheet, I have a number of rows of employee data. Each row has data about the employee, including the manager which is necessary to build the hierarchy. I have defined a name table range to make it easier to identify the data to connect to. In the org chart settings panel, I browse for the Excel file in a document library. It has automatically selected my table object from Excel. However, if I had multiple objects, I could select the correct one. There are two additional pages of settings. All the columns will be added from the table in Excel with the names used in Excel. On this second screen, I can change the names of columns and the data type. I'll explain this screen in more detail when looking at the Graph API. The final screen maps specific fields from the data source to fields used to create the org chart. Some of these will be mapped automatically based on the name of the field in the data source. My telephone number is not mapped, so I will set this. Here you can see my org chart created using data from the Excel spreadsheet. Data on the third setting screen is used to set the hierarchy and fields in the persona card. The view profile screen is also fully populated although I can change this using options on the second settings screen. Now let's proceed with connecting to the second data source type, the SharePoint list. Here is my SharePoint list called employees. It contains a number of fields of employee data. There is also a picture column type, which links to a photo stored in a library in SharePoint. In the org chart settings panel, I select SharePoint list as the data source. I can either connect to a list in the current SharePoint site or a list in another site within my tenant. Next I select the SharePoint list and if I want to select a specific view. This is very useful if you only want to display certain items in the org chart. 
for instance, a specific department. I can also define the maximum number of items to return from the list. There is only one additional screen of settings. This is to map specific columns from the list to the org chart, as seen with Excel. My columns are well named, so they automatically map. This includes the photo column from the SharePoint list. Once again, here is my org chart, but this time connected to a SharePoint list. Now let's look at using the Graph API as a data source for the org chart. The Microsoft Graph can connect the data sources across Microsoft 365. This could be information from Azure Active Directory or contacts from a user's Outlook. Before you connect to the Graph API as a data source, you may need to perform an additional step. In the new SharePoint Admin Center, you may need to approve connecting to the Graph API. This is managed under API Management in the Admin Center. Quizcom have a knowledge base article detailing the steps involved which is accessible from the settings page of the org chart. The Microsoft Graph Explorer is a great resource for you to understand more about the data returned by the Graph API. There are a number of sample queries, including all users in the organization. Let's now explore the four options in the org chart app which define how to connect to the Microsoft Graph. Firstly, there is the path in the Graph API. The most useful in the scenario of the org chart is slash users, which will return users in Azure Active Directory. Next, specify which columns should be returned, separating each column with a comma. Note that these are the names returned by the Graph API and may be different to the display names. For example, mobile will be mobile phone without a space. There are two types of filters which can be applied against the data returned. Firstly, a query parameter against the Graph API. There is a link to explain more about the options for these queries. This option is limited, so QuizCom provide an additional advanced filter function. The best starting point when connecting to the Graph API is using one of the samples provided by QuizCom. There are several samples with AD org chart users, the best for returning Active Directory information. This sets a predefined connection to Active Directory, which you can then modify. You can see the path populated for the Graph API. All relevant columns are also being selected, including contact fields and location. There are several filters included to only show enabled accounts and only include members, which will exclude guest accounts. I can change this filter if I want using the correct syntax. For example, setting a filter to only return users where the department is sales. I can use a combination of the filter statement and the advanced filter function to only return the results I require. There are other options I can set to define the connection, including the maximum number of items to return. A query to the Microsoft Graph will unlikely return all the properties required by the org chart. 
Specifically, the connection to the user's path does not include manager or photo data. The extended properties section allows for custom property requests to the graph API. The sample provided by QuizCom for connecting to AD information shows how to configure these custom property requests. They include a graph request path and a function to format the data correctly. If a particular column like manager is required to load the org chart, you can set the property request to be required. This will delay the loading of the web part. The format of each request could be different dependent on the data being returned. In the case of photos, the function needs to ensure the correct data result of photo is returned. Whenever you connect the org chart to a data source, there are two options at the bottom of the settings panel. The first allows you to set a custom CSS file which will override the standard appearance. For more information on using custom CSS, please view the second training video on the ListView Plus app. The second option allows you to define the time to keep a persistent cache. The web part caches requests that take longer than others to enhance the web part's performance. You can change the time or have no cache at all. An indicator is available within the app to show the user if data is currently cached and give them the option to refresh the page or clear the cache. Are two additional settings screens to configure the data returned from the Graph API. Screen, I can configure how each field should appear on the profile which is linked to from a persona card. The sample provided by QuizCom has these preset. For configuring the connection yourself, you will need to configure which columns are shown in the profile. Whether adding new column info or changing an existing one, I can set a friendly name and data type. You can also set the order columns are shown in the profile. If we now view a profile of a user in the org chart, we can see how these settings are applied. The third setting screen defines the mappings to columns which create the org chart. This is the same as the other two data sources. You map the name and position columns shown in the org chart. So the manager column, which creates the hierarchy. The picture shown in the org chart and persona cards. So the phone and email columns. In this training video, I showed you the three different data sources which can be connected to the org chart app. I showed you the different settings and went through these in detail for the graph API. Thank you for watching this training video. If you need any further information, please contact QuizCom using the details on the screen.